Hadith says Imam Musa ibn Ja'far was walking with some of his companions. When he noticed Rajulan Aswad Adim al Manzar. Let me translate this. Sometimes you find incredible details in these narrations of the Ahl al Bayt. They're walking, imagine this is Musa ibn Ja'far. This is the seventh Imam. This is God's proof on earth. And he's with some of his companions and students who know who he is, right? As he's walking, he notices a black slave. Adim al Mandar means who looked particularly ugly. He wasn't a pleasant looking man. Now, in Arab culture and in many other cultures, but especially in Arab culture, being black was seen as a vice, was seen as something to be ashamed of. So the Ahlul Bayt, subhanAllah, the way they treated people of different complexions and colors was such that it's as if they were trying to turn this culture on its head. Imam Hussein doing what he did to John in Karbala. John himself was displeased with the way he spoke tells us that he was displeased with the color of his skin only because of the racism that he received from the society back then. And that's why he says to the Imam that my color is black and my smell is foul. So give me some of your spirit so that my skin turns white. He's not talking about his physical complexion. He's talking about something else. In Arabic, they say to someone who does something good to you, they tell him, May Allah illuminate your face. We're not talking about color. We're talking about light. So you could have the darkest color complexion and yet, and I've seen this myself, SubhanAllah, because of their Iman, because of their faith, you see them as the most beautiful person you've ever seen. And so Imam Musa ibn Ja'far is trying to turn this whole culture on its head. What does he do? He suddenly stops. Imagine the whole convoy has to come to a halt. Imagine there's like a, a presidential motorcade. Suddenly the president says, stop. He gets out of the car and what does the, the Imam do? He walks up to this man. He sits next day. He began cracking jokes. He began, he began speaking with him, telling him stories and so on and so forth. Just, just to give him a good time. Sometimes people need nothing more than that. To feel appreciated, to feel loved. So the Imam speaks to him for a while and then he's not content with that. He says to him, listen, if you need anything, you know where I live. Come to me and I'll make sure I do. So then the Imam goes back to his companions and his students. They say, yeah, yeah, not you know, it, it's, it's not so much about his skin color, it's not so much about, you know, where he comes from or his ethnicity. It's the fact that this is just a poor slave. He's a beggar on the side of the street. It's inappropriate for you to stand and talk to him and just, you know, act as though he's, he's an old pal. What does the Imam say? Listen to this, brothers and sisters. The Imam talk about humility. The Imam says, why? What's wrong with you? Abdun min Abidullah. He is yet another slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like me. Wajarun fi biladullah. And he's a neighbor in this land that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's a fellow slave of God. We're all slaves of Allah. And he's a neighbor of mine. He lives on this earth, doesn't he? And then the Imam said, Yajma'una wa iyyah. And I have more commonalities with him. What are they? Number one, Abuna khayrul aba'i Adam. We, have, we share a common ancestor, and that's Adam, the greatest of all ancestors. Wa khayrul adiyan al Islam. And the greatest religion, and that is the religion of Islam. Humility, brothers and sisters, it creates love that could never be created with money. People who have a pool in their home, suddenly they've got a lot more friends. If you've got a jacuzzi, then you know, you better be prepared to throw a big party. If you've got a big, fast, beautiful car, I'm sure people are going to be throwing yourselves in. But this isn't love. This is not love. This is short-lived. And as soon as you lose those things, suddenly nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody wants to be your friend. True love, lasting love, is the one you get by being humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.